encouraging thinspiration, believe it or not, which we will be discussing in a second, plus local author Lee Scrivens on the sofa. <laughs> The potentially fatal condition anorexia involves an intense fear of uh, gaining weight or becoming fat with the uh, pro-anorexia websites sprouting up uh, in the size zero stories. This condition is back in the headlines. Joining me now is Emma Bacon from Balance MK who herself, uh, I believe, has suffered this condition. Have yes. You? So tell us a bit about yourself then, Emma. Um, well, I am... Um I currently run an organisation called Balanced MK in Milton Keynes that helps people um, with an eating disorder by providing self-support groups and one-to-one -one counselling and trying to increase general understanding and awareness about eating disorders um, as a follow-up from my recovery from an eating disorder. I mean, uh, how, what are the main causes? I mean, is it, is it a mental type um, disease, uh, condition? I mean, I, I, I really know nothing about it and I want to today and find out and you seem to be the best person to find out because you've experienced it yourself. I mean what causes it? There are many different causes. I mean every single type of eating disorder is a psychological disorder uh, with physical symptoms. So it is definitely a mental health issue um, and I think that's something that people need to be aware of that it doesn't, you, somebody doesn't have to be a certain uh, weight for example you don't have to be five and a half stone to be anorexic as such it's a state of mind that has a physical impact on your body um, so it's definitely something something about how you feel perhaps you feel out of control of some other aspects in your life and your mind has chosen to take on uh, an issue with food as a way of coping with those things I've got Zora on the couch with me now to help me out here because I mean it's 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 scary to know that I mean how what what causes somebody to suddenly have, I guess it's a, a weakness in your mind that you think you're not as good as you are, is it? I mean, are there, are there lots of ways that spark this off? Well, I mean, most people that have an eating disorder do have a low self-esteem, especially when it comes to anorexia. But sometimes, uh, I mean, outwardly, many people um, around that person wouldn't know that that person has low self-esteem. In fact, most people with anorexia, for example, are very, very confident, very high achievers, uh, do well in business, for example, or academically. People with bulimia tend to be very confident people that um, really sort of come across as impulsive and have lots of friends, very popular, although obviously I am generalizing. But um, you wouldn't necessarily know outwardly. It's something internally, and it's something that if more people can talk about this, then they would be more able to express their feelings and, and get help before it's too late. And also, it's affecting rather a lot of men now at the moment, isn't it? Yes, there's so. about 10% of um, people with anorexia um, are men. And with compulsive overeating disorder, about 50% of people with that disorder are, are male. So, I mean, so how did, how did you suddenly go down that slippery slope of, of, of it? I mean, and were you aware you were doing it? That's the yeah, and, um, well, it started off all very innocently. I just felt... I had some issues uh, with my body image and I decided that although I was um, by no means overweight, I was a healthy weight, I decided if I could lose a little bit of weight, I would feel happier, more confident and more able to do the things in my life I wanted to do to be successful. And that little bit of weight, when I got to that weight, I wasn't as happy as I thought I would be. And so I thought, I, I just need to lose a little bit more and it, it kept on going until it sort of crept up on me. I found that um, as time went by, I started to sort of be afraid of certain foods. Decide I won't eat that anymore because that's not so good for me. And, and as time went on, it got to the point that there were maybe only 10 food groups that I would eat um, at all. And, and actually, sort of, um, like I say, it crept up on me. I didn't know that it was happening until it was too late. So what was your turning point? When did you suddenly realise it's gone too far? you know I'm at death's door because you know many people have got to that stage when either they have to be you know sent to hospital or, or you know their loved ones send them to hospital to get better or another or another place don't they? That, that's true. So did that happen to you? What happened to you? I think lots of people do need to reach a rock bottom before they sort of recognize that they need help. Um, the thing with an eating disorder is many people are in denial and so even when I was um, very, very unwell, I did not believe that I had an eating disorder because I thought in order to have an eating disorder you needed to be four and a half stone 
and that was the only point at which you deserved to get help. But that, that just purely isn't the case. For me, it got to the point where it was having a drastic effect on my life. And that's one of the things that you know people need to be aware of. If uh, disordered eating is having a huge effect on your lifestyle, then it's worth looking, looking into. And um, it was when I found myself at the point that I didn't even feel able to work because I wasn't eating enough or I was uh, suffering with depression and OCD as a sort of secondary um, effect of the anorexia. And I would find myself every day, I would be crying upset, mm -hmm. I would feel bad about myself, I wouldn't want to go out, I wouldn't want people to see me or be with me. Um, and I didn't even think that I deserved you know, my partner mm -hmm. to be with me. And I just wasn't really able to function. Um, and I was concerned that if I didn't get help at that point, then the only way from there was downhill very quickly. And Ultimately, I didn't want to die, and so I knew that I needed to get help, no matter how scary that w really was. Uh, well, at least you realise that, but many people don't realise that they are on the verge of becoming yeah. seriously ill um, to the point of no return. Um, how can some a family affected by this, say they've spotted an eating disorder within, uh, you know, somebody within their family, how can they go about getting help or, or talking that person around into getting help? Because uh, from what I've read, people with anorexia either don't want to be treated or, or just don't realise or just, you know, yeah. don't realise that they have a problem. It's very true. I mean, even, even myself, when I talk back about it now, it sounds as if I was wanting to get the help, but at the time it was very much as you're so suggesting. Um, it was my husband that took me to get help, almost demanded that I go and speak to somebody. And one of the important things is that you don't want to just tell somebody to pull together and eat, you know, get on and eat. and and disregard their feelings. There's obviously some fundamental issues that this person needs to deal with. And if, um, as friends or family of this person, if you can help encourage them to feel safe and relaxed talking to you, then they may open up a little more. I found my husband uh, took me to a self-support group for people with eating disorders, and that gave me an opportunity to meet other people that could understand how I felt. And that really did help me uh, with the denial, help me understand that I too had issues with food and that perhaps counselling and self-support groups might be able to help me. When you mentioned the, the, the families and, and your partner and everything, it must be, the, the, the condition is almost an illness for them as well because they, they're going to see you have suffered even earlier and they, they're, they're caught between, well if, if you tell her you might turn on them, um, I mean it, it must be hard for people watching you go down that way because they've got to wait for you to finally admit. That's true. I mean, my family were uh, very concerned about me way before I actually admitted to them I had an issue. My husband was the only person who really uh, knew what was happening, and that's because we lived together. Um, and I would, because I was in such a, the depths of a, an eating disorder, I would lie about what I was doing, how I was feeling. If my husband said that he was going to seek help or speak to somebody about it, I would tell him that I would leave him if he did so. It's, it's a very, very difficult um, thing to deal with and it just takes a lot of trust, a lot of love and care and if you can get help from professionals like the people at Balanced MK then they're able to take on a role that perhaps the family and friends aren't able to take on. Uh, sometimes having someone uh, slightly disassociated with that person can, can offer that extra help. But we do also have a carer self-support group due to be starting probably in May that gives people like parents and, and friends and partners an opportunity to talk to each other because as you say it can have a drastic effect mm -hmm. on, on how they feel and their lifestyle with the concerns for that person. Now when I was researching uh, this subject, because um, it's all new to me, uh, they, we accessed some some pro-anorexic websites, you must have seen them. It is horrendous. and. The people that create them, what, what are they? I mean, people are they're, they're, they're telling you how to kill yourself and be, be uh, lose weight and everything. And so, how? I mean, what is their purpose? What, are, are they confused and think they're doing good to other people, or is there is even something even more sinister behind it? Well, somebody with um, anorexia, for example, has to have extreme self-control in order to be able to do what they do, mm. um, and when you're in the depths of anorexia, um, it, it affects your mind and the way that you're thinking and you're actually terrified of the idea of eating or of gaining any weight and you, even though you know it's not very good for you, when you're losing that weight, um, you get a buzz and you get a sense of uh, 
um, security from doing so. And oh, these I'm people. I'm going to break you in there. Sure. Uh, we could talk for hours and hours. Thanks ever so much, Amy. So join us after the break. Uh, we're talking Simply Mingling this morning, so if you fancy finding out fun ways of meeting people. With my stomach, I've got more than enough to help me out when we're joined by later by uh, Vivian Radfer, a top belly dancer. So uh, no doubt a few belly laughs promised there. Plus, of course, local personality, local author Lee Scriven.